Thank you. Hi there, Rita McGrath from the Columbia Business School. I guess they. This actually came about with an interaction I had with some colleagues at Microsoft. So it isn't even my own research, but it is something I thought was fascinating. You know, 15 years ago, if you think about it, virtually nobody in this room had sent email. Maybe you played around with it a little bit. Uh, today, life would be unimaginable without it. But like all technologies, it's introduced some interesting unintended consequences. Some of us love it. It's made us more productive. Some of us live in terror of hearing that bing bong and spend hours and hours uh, trying to just to cope with the deluge. Well, today, technologies are beginning to emerge that will have, I believe, as pervasive and as um, important an impact on how we do business as email. They are called total recall systems. This is an example of a Microsoft variant in which everything you say and do and everywhere you are is actually capturable, searchable, and discoverable. So imagine if you're in a meeting and every single thing that you may say, every joke, every contribution to brainstorming can be captured and replayed in all its glory at some point in the future by people who weren't even there. I think that's kind of an interesting question. So think about the meetings you've been in, you know? The meetings where perhaps an unintended angry word occurred, where perhaps there's a little jet lag you're struggling with, where maybe there's a little unanticipated flirtation going on. You know, things that normally would not be noticed at all or glossed over can now be found later on after the moment has passed and in perpetuity. Because as we try to bring people together who aren't physically co-located, we find that these things are now able to be digitized. This is Cisco. This is a Cisco office. This is a Cisco receptionist. She is not actually there. She is at a physical office many miles removed from her virtual office at Cisco, and she acts just like a regular receptionist using telepresence technology. So imagine this. You know, today our technologies for recalling, say, what happened at meetings prior to our arrival on the scene are fairly rudimentary. It's notes, it's conversations, it's who was there. Tomorrow we'll be able to go back in time and visit those meetings. We'll be able to actually see who said what and who was able to, uh, to give input. So you could play meetings just the same way you might play a DVD or a record today. You can skip the boring bits. You can go back to the bits that later made the newspaper. You could look for undiscovered gems five years from now in something that was said that was either very prescient or very stupid uh, going forward. So I think that's fascinating. Imagine being able to play meetings as though it was a DVD little more sinister. Let's say things went horribly wrong. This is an image many of you will recognize. This is the Millennium Dome in London, which was supposed to revolutionize the world of, uh, of uh, land-based entertainment. Well, imagine if you could go back in time and construct an accurate, undisputed, transparent record of everybody that was involved in making the decision. Now, some of that I think might be good. This is some, uh, some examples from my file at home. I call it my flops file. You have to lose your parent company at least $50 million to make it into my flops file. And what you see is the same pattern. Untested assumptions taken as fact, people going on much too long with an idea that probably should have been redirected earlier. So one of the positives, I think, of this set of new technologies is you're going to be able to go and look at what's going on in your organization and what went on in your organization. You're going to be able to make some connections between those things and discover perhaps opportunities that were never discovered before. You know, one of the things we know about innovation is very often that light bulb going off is the accumulation of lots and lots of different inputs from lots and lots of different places. So you'll be able to do that more quickly, more easily, more completely, uh, and with different groups of people than perhaps were there when the original topic was discussed. So you could see ideas that had never gone anywhere perhaps coming into their own later on. Moreover, in organizations, imagine being able to search on a database for, um, oh, I don't know, Khalid, and uh, the words, you know, geographic discovery, and find every single person who Khalid's interacted with, find who the experts are, find where the knowledge really resides in your organization. So I think there's some fascinating expertise-oriented things that you can think of with respect to these um, new technologies. So I think, imagine if you're organizational world was as easy to access and as complete to access and as easy to search as a CD is today or a DVD is today. That is not out of the realm of technologies that are possible right now. What are these? They're tools. They're tools. And like any tool, like email, like voicemail, like telepresence, like uh, unified communications that we're using today, they are there for good. They are there for ill. The thing I would like to impress upon you is that in many ways they are coming. 
and they will occur in our organizations before we even know it. This very meeting is up on YouTube in digital form. It can be searched and, you know, there are controls around it, who can see it, but um, I think it's a real revolution in how we store and access knowledge and I would encourage you to think about the implications of that.